This is the Creality Autolight Scanner. It scans things by using its features. This is the thing, and it's got no features. So basically, how do we use this thing to scan this thing? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how I do it. So this remote control, as you can see, it's got no features as such. It's got buttons on it, but they're all like uniform. And when you look around the sides of it and the shape of it, it's got nothing really for the, uh, for the scanner to track onto. So it uses its features to track. The way I like to scan things that I know that I've either got to be joined or I, I can turn them over like I did in the last video. I like to scan them upright like this. Because if they've got to be joined, you need about 60% of overlap. And I prefer the overlap to be like all of this data. So basically the first scan would be done and I'd chop the bottom off there. And then I'd turn it over and I'd chop the bottom off there. And I'm chopping the bottom off because that's where I'm holding it with the, uh, with the blue tack. And then I've got all this then as features for joining the scan together. They're not good enough features for tracking in the first instance, but they will be good enough for joining the scan together. So, let's connect our light bridge to the scanner. Let's put our remote control on the, uh, on the turntable in a little bit of blue tack, and let's set up for the scan. Let's start a new project called Remote. Okay, so this is only a small item then, so I'm gonna scan this in small mode. So I'm gonna go normal, small, geometry. Let's go to preview. And there it is. So let's basically start to scan. Now it's scanning the front all right, to a fashion. Because of the buttons, the scanner is that good. It's obviously using the buttons as features to keep the tracking. But now I'm on the side. Oh, I'm struggling now, look. I'm struggling. And as you can see, it's just flipped itself over. It hasn't got a clue where it is. Come back to the front. Okay, it's picked it up again now, but I've already, already ruined the scan. Let's go, try to go around the other side. It's got it at the bottom, look. Because at the bottom we've got that blue tack and that blue tack is basically enough of a feature for it to lock onto. So we'll start to come up the back. And it's, oh, it's gone mad again. You see, you just can't do it. So we've failed miserably with that. I saw a thing on Facebook today where somebody had a brilliant idea to put it on top of an egg box and I thought that was an excellent idea but it only really works if you've got the object in that orientation because the egg box wouldn't be in the frame of the scanner if it's a tall object and then you can flip it over like that and you could do the back and then you could join them together but as I said about the 60% overlap you've only got this surface here there this surface here for the overlap where really you want a good surface for the overlap. So that's why I like to do it that way up and then that way up. So let's put my remote control back on the table. So how do I do it now? I need the help of a few friends. Policeman, rabbit and bear. These three little things here are going to help me to add features into the workspace. Now, as I said before, I want them as tall, really. So having them nice and tall like this really, really helps. Don't worry about them being too close. Just plant, place them onto the, onto the turntable into a place where they're basically just positioned around it. Nice and close. Not touching, obviously, but nice and close. So now, as long as I keep the policeman, the rabbit or the bunny, for instance, one of the decoys, actually in the same frame as the remote control, the scanner should keep track and scan the remote control. So let's, let's see if it works. Okay, so let's start again then. So we've got normal object, we want small, we want geometry tracking, and let's click on preview. Now, 
start scanning at the bottom as I normally do. And as you can see, the dark green is what's actually in frame. So as long as I try and keep in frame the remote and a bit of the decoys, I should have a good scan. Just a little bit close then as I come around the corner. There we are, the back of the policeman's in and the back of the remote. Now as I move over a little bit, I've got the back of the bunny in and the back of the remote. Start coming around this corner a little bit. Now the bunny is going to shade it now. The bunny is going to shade the remote so I won't be able to see it. But as soon as I come around the corner now and the bunny's still in shot, and there's the side of the uh, the remote control. This is the bear's turn now to come into play. And there he is. Just keeping in shot now then. Let's come up to the top. You know, keeping the ears in. Keeping the top of the bear's head in. And the policeman starts to play over there, look. And that will start to scan the top of the remote control. So, come down the back. Just to make sure that they're all in shot. Let's come back around the front. I mean I'm doing a lovely scan of them, all the three things as well. But obviously that's just to keep the tracking. So, let's pause it and have a look where we are. That. Looks great. Right, I'm going to complete the scan. And I'm going to do a new scan. Now then, you might say to me, why are you doing a new scan? Because in your last video, all you did was turn it over and continue scanning. Now that's okay in certain circumstances, like when I did the impact driver. Because the impact driver is the only thing I was scanning and tracking on. Well, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm tracking on these three things to scan the remote control. So if I flip the remote control upside down and carry on scanning, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make a right mess of it because basically it thinks it's, it thinks it's still going to be the one way up when it's not. So the only way to do it would be to flip everything upside down and obviously you can't do that because it's on the turntable. So what we have to do on, in this particular circumstances is basically finish the scan off Put everything back into place and start another scan and then we'll merge the two scans together. Oh, it fell over. Here we are. Set it up. Click on preview. And away we go again. There we are, look, here's the bunny. The bunny's taking, uh, the bunny's blocking my view at the moment, but obviously it's being used for tracking. There we are, right to the top, and it starts to go green. The top needs a bit more. So let's just linger up there, and as you can see with the dark green, I've got the bunny's ears in shot, and I've got the side of the policeman in, which keeps the tracking up and down. Let's just go over the top a touch just to get that corner in but keeping the policeman's head in. Now let's come down to the bottom keeping the policeman's body in and the bear starting to take his turn look by being in the shot. And there we are scanning it lovely. The bunny's ears are coming in the side. And it looks a little bit pink up here, up at this corner. So let's just linger there a little bit. Get it from a few different angles, see if I can get that in. Okay, and pause, see where we are.
perfect. And complete that scan. And I've now got two scans. There's the one with the remote control upside down. And there's the other one with the remote controller all the way up. So this is now the workflow to join, to finish these two scans off and to join them together. So let's start off with scan number one. And I want to cut off everything now that's not the remote. So I want to circle the middle, invert selection, delete. And it gets rid of that. I'm now going to chop off the bottom of the uh, remote putty, delete. And I'm going to get rid of that bit and delete. So I should now have just the remote control with the base cut off. Scan 2. Same workflow. Come to the, uh, the top. Invert the selection, delete. Cut that off. Now it's time to, uh, to fuse them. So let's click on both of them and let's fuse them at point 0.2. Point two. Let that run. There's number one done. And there's number two done. We then go over to process now in alignment. Two scans are selected, auto align. And let's see if we can align those. It should do this quite easily. And as you can see, it's aligned that really easily because it's got it's got plenty of features on there for alignment. Not enough features for obviously track scanning, but plenty for the alignment. So let's exit that. And there's my uh, remote control. So as you can see from that then, that's the point cloud. Obviously you just click on mesh now and mesh it to finish off, but I think we get the idea. So there you are, that's the point cloud. And as you can see, it's a decent scan. Everything lines up. Obviously all you'd have to do now is mesh it. So there you go. How to scan a thing with now features. Thanks for watching.